Welcome to tonight's telecast for daytime, whichever it may be for you that are viewing. We trust that you are about to experience a God moment, meaning that his presence is going to invade your space, your heart, your mind, the place where you are right now, and that God is going to deposit something rich to you. Amen. But right now, before we go any further into our service, uh, I just want to take a moment to pray and ask for God's presence. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, that we can come to you boldly unto your throne of grace, that we can come in the name of Jesus Christ, and that when we come, Lord, you will hear and you will answer. And God, we pray now for your presence to be here amongst us in the sanctuary and wherever people are viewing this, that you would invade their space, Holy Spirit. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, surround them, fill them. May your presence, O oh God, manifest in Jesus' mighty name. And may now our praise and our worship of you honor you, bring glory to your name. May the message today not only just be words, but may they be life to those that hear them. And God, we thank you for the privilege of this time in Jesus' name. And if you said that, say in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be right back. Justin is going to sing. For 
for evil I pray that you take it and that you turn it for good in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to sing that chorus you take what the enemy meant sing it with us you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good Come on, decree it today. Yes. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yes, he does. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Whatever evil has you been turn intended. It Turn it over to God right now. Let him turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. And the evil that has bound you. The evil that has afflicted you. The evil that has haunted you and taunted you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against that. And I pray that the yoke be broken. And that God take what the enemy has intended for evil over your life. Would be taken and placed in the hands of Almighty God and turned for good. The enemy has told you the evil that has happened to you, has, has sealed you, has bound you. But I declare your liberty tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. And he might destroy the works of the devil. In the name of Jesus, I pray the yoke be broken over your life. And that the power of God take what was meant for evil and turn it and turn it, and turn it for good. In Jesus' name, if you agree with that, say amen. Say amen and praise the Lord. Give God praise right where you are for the yoke-breaking power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. We've got to praise God sometimes until the breakthrough comes. Amen. We've got to pray without ceasing until until the breakthrough comes praise the lord 
And so I got a message for you tonight. It's a message for everyone who meant well and who did well, but were met with opposition. And I believe that would, that would apply to each and every one of us in some way, shape, or form, spiritually, even physically. We've meant well, we've done well, but we were met with opposition. Think about that for a second. How many times in your life and what that could do to a person. When somebody does something and, and means well, somebody does well, and uh, there's opposition, it often shuts someone down. It often binds them. It binds them to, that, to, to where they are. That's what opposition is meant to do. The opposition of the enemy is meant to keep you where you are. Not only to keep you where you are, but to bring you down even further than where you are. But aren't you glad for the nail-scarred hand that reaches down to pull you up? Can you say amen for Jesus? And so I want to give you a few examples from the Scripture of those who meant well, who were doing well, and yet they were met with opposition. In 1 Corinthians, the 16th chapter, the Apostle Paul testifies about his itinerant ministry and how God had opened doors for him and uh, wanted him to go through those doors. Obviously, he wouldn't open a door if he didn't want you to go through a door. Can you say amen? And so in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 9, these are the words of the apostle as he testifies. He says, a great door, a great door, and effectual is opened unto me. Referring to the spreading of the gospel. God had opened a great door for the apostle. And then he goes on to say, and there are many adversaries. He didn't say just one adversary or a few adversaries. He said, it's, it seems that everywhere I go, there are many that are opposing to what I'm doing, even though what I'm doing is good. And even though I mean well and do well, and I'm doing it for the right reasons, there are still many adversaries. And some of us have felt that way at times. And uh, it's true. Another example could be found in uh, 1 Thessalonians. And in 1 Thessalonians, I'll turn there, and you can read it later, or you can read it now if you can get to it before me. 1 Thessalonians 2.18. The apostle testifies again uh, regarding the opposition. 1 Thessalonians 2.18. And he says, Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. You see, Satan was opposing what God had called the apostle to do, what God had wanted the apostle to do, but he was opposing. And I want you to know that's his job. He is an opposer. He is sent. Uh, he, he comes to hinder. He comes to distract. He comes to take you out of your purpose. And that's what was happening. The Apostle Paul found his purpose in God and in the preaching of the gospel. And, and, and it seemed that everywhere he went, there was somebody opposing uh, what he was trying to do. And though he meant well and though he did well, there were many that, and, uh, that he encountered with opposition. So we see two, two examples of the enemy. Uh, many adversaries. And an adversary, if you want to know, if you don't know, you probably do know, but an adversary is some, someone or something that causes resistance. Uh, someone or something that causes a hindrance. A hindrance to what it is and where it is you're trying to get to. And it's important for you to understand that uh, there are always going to be hindrances uh, in, in progress. When God calls you to, to go forward, when God calls you to, to uh, pr progress, if you will, there's going to be uh, hindrances. There's going to be obstacles. And that's not time for you to sit down or, or say, oh, well, I, I meant well, I, I did well. Why is this happening? No, the question uh, why it's happening, uh, it would be foolish because you're wasting time. And so God wanted us to know that there would be adversaries in, 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 in our attempts to do well. And in our attempts of meaning well, that there would be resistance. Not everybody would celebrate. 
And so there are things that God wants you to know first about warfare, and I want you to understand something about warfare first before I go into my exhortation. Number one, Romans 8, 31 and 32 says, if God is for us, and it could have been translated, since God is for us, who can be against us? In essence, the question is, 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 is basically, you don't have to really focus too much on who is uh, hindering you or what is trying to hinder you, although it's there. You can acknowledge it as the apostle acknowledged it. He didn't stay too long on it. He had somewhere to go. He had something to do. He, 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 he needed to get to the place where God wanted him to go. Can you say amen? And so, yes, I, you need to understand about warfare. God is for you. He's not against you. And so the hindrance and the resistance is it's not God so much trying to keep you back from something that, 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 that is good for you. No, the enemy. You've got to understand the warfare. Hallelujah. In, in Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, uh, the, the, the apostle spells out the warfare for us. Uh, he, 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 he defines what warfare is and how to engage it. In Ephesians 6, 10, it says this, uh, uh, to the intent, of, uh, uh, Ephesians 6.10. Let's look at it. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Why would he tell us that? Because he knew. God knows that there would be resistance and we would have to be strong in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against, there it is, the word against, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The instruction is take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand, to stand up to, in the evil day, and having done all, stand. Hallelujah. So God has called you to be a stander, one who doesn't cowtail and run, one who doesn't cave in and, and, and fall apart, but God wants you to stand in the midst of your resistance, in the midst of your progress. When things uh, are coming against you, and it seems like uh, all of your good is evil spoken of, and and it and, and seems that every time you try to do well, and every time you mean well, you are met with some kind of resistance, some kind of negative. God wants you to stand. Can you say amen? Stand. And so it's important for you to understand two things, that God is for you in warfare, understand that, and two, there is a warfare. And that it's not because of uh, anything that, uh, uh, don't take it personal, this warfare is against all who are progressing, amen, who are fulfilling the will of God. God opens doors, hallelujah. It's God that opens doors. Even the apostle prayed. He said, pray for me that God would open up more doors and that doors would open. And you might be saying right now to yourself, uh, I would to God that more doors would open in my life. Well, they are going to open, but you are going to be met with resistance of some sort. And you've got to be ready for the battle. You've got to be ready to stand against that resistance or you're going to cave. And you'll never get to where you're supposed to be if you cave. And so God opens doors. And one way of looking at this, uh, life uh, uh, and the way life works and the way progress works and the way progress happens, one way of looking at it is that God doesn't always just give us things in our hand, but he puts things within our reach. It's so important for you to understand that a lot of the things that uh, you're going to obtain, it's going to be because God opened the door for you and you walked into it. You, you pressed into it. Sometimes we got to press in through that door because there's somebody on the other side of that door saying, no, I don't want you going any further than where you are. No, I don't want you to progress any further than what you have. No, you can be saved, but I don't want you filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but I don't want you to be a witness. There's always that hindrance, and we need to press through. Can you say amen? And so, yes, uh, uh, trying to wrap your head around the whole warfare idea, it will lead you to, uh, to nowhere except defeat. 
I can't wrap my head around why the warfare, why the test, why the resistance. I've got to know, well, number one, God has opened the door for me. Number two, there will be resistance. And number three, I can stand because Christ is standing with me. Christ is standing in me and with me. And he is enabling me, amen, to get to where I need to go as he was with the Apostle Paul. He meant well, he did well, yet there were many adversaries. And so we need to understand and stop trying to figure out why. Why the resistance? Why this? Why that? It's a waste of your time and energy. And start focusing in on what God wants you to do. And start focusing in on how you need to stand and how you need to do warfare. Amen. The psalmist said in Psalm 144, 1, he said, Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. And so the psalmist was focused on that God was his strength and God was the warrior in him and God was the one that was able to make him more than a conqueror and God was the one that was going to defeat the enemy and God was the one that was greater in him than he that's in the world. And that's what we need to focus on in the warfare. That it's God that, that is for us and not against us. It's God that will, that will cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. It's God. It's God. It's God. And sometimes you wonder why, God, when I try to grow and I turn my life over to you and I'm trying to do the right thing, why such resistance? I told you why. Don't try and figure it out. It's going to happen. Concerning your opportunities in life, God's going to open up doors. He's not going to put everything in your hand, but he's going to put it within your reach so that you can press toward it and that you can obtain it. As far as the church is concerned, God has opened the door for the church, and there are many adversaries. Not everybody loves the church. Not everybody loves the purpose of the church. There are many that talk about the church. Even within the church, there are people that are biting and devouring one another. And we need to press through. And there are people who say, I don't want to go to church no more because too many people there are hypocrites or too many people there are not doing the right thing. Let me tell you something. The reason why there are a lot of people in church that are not doing the right thing is because that's where people come when they're sick. They come to church. The church is a hospital. It's a place that gives people an opportunity to get well. And there are people that come to church. And let me tell you something. You were, you were one. I was one. I came to church sick, and Jesus healed me. But there are many that refuse healing, and they tarry for a while, and they become problematic in every way, every area. And they, they, they love drama. They seem to gravitate toward it. They feed it. They, 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 God says stay away from that stuff. Focus more in on who you are in Christ and what Christ wants you to do. And that's how I survived for nearly 40 years in the faith. Not by looking at people, not by listening to people, but by looking to God and listening to his word and hearing the Holy Ghost speak into my heart the things I needed to hear. And that's how you will prevail. Can you say amen? I've seen many come, many go, but I've seen many come and many stay. And so it's important for you to understand to stop looking in the wrong places, the, right, the wrong things, and start looking to the right one, to Jesus Christ, who will teach your hands to war and your fingers to fight. Hallelujah. And so the church has opportunities to preach the gospel. The church has opportunities to, to go and do what Jesus commanded it to do, but there will be adversaries from time to time. And they will try to hinder, and they will, but they cannot stop. That's the glorious good news. You see, no enemy can stop what God wants done. They may try and come in and hinder. They may try and do this. They may try and do that. But let me tell you, when God wants someone to do something, it's going to be done. Can you say praise God? And so I'm encouraging you, whatever progress you are looking to make, understand there will be hindrances and adversaries. You go to the gym and somebody will bother you and hinder you from your progress. Whatever it is you try to do, you know, you try to, to get a hold of your weight issues and you go to a party and they stuff you with cake. I get it. Wherever, but you've got to press in to your goal. You've got to press into the mark. You've got to press into the goal and God will give you a good prize. Can you say amen? And finally, having this warfare knowledge 
you need to understand that you are a soldier. That when you came to Christ, you, you were a babe in the Lord, but he may, he's making you into a soldier, one who can battle, fight the good fight of faith, and not cave in every time there's an adversary or a hindrance. But you can stand and you can move forward. And if you're not moving forward, you can stand, amen, until you have that open door to move forward. And God will bless you. There's some things in conclusion that I want you to understand about the adversaries and the hindrances. One is the adversary that uh, is, is attacking or, or confronting you right now. If you are a warrior, that adversary will cause you to double down. You will double down in commitment. Amen. You'll become more committed when the adversary steps in. If you have a warfare mentality. And if you have a warfare mentality, uh, when, when the enemy comes in and, 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 and starts to hinder you, you will begin to really look at what really matters and what really doesn't matter. And you will put away the things that don't matter. And you will focus more, put more of your focus in on what matters. These are two things that you'll, will happen if you have a warfare mentality. The third thing is, when, if you have a warfare mentality, when hindrance comes and you press through and you get your breakthrough and you come out on the other side, you will appreciate your journey even that much more. And so wonderful things happen. Let me, he will take what the enemy means for evil and he will turn it for good, but you've got to let him make you a warrior. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to pray for you tonight. That God turn your faith to him. And that God would give you a warring spirit to war against your adversary. And to fight the good fight of faith. And to put your trust in Jesus. And to not be swallowed up by the, the good you meant. And, and the, the way it was treated. And how hurt you've been. No, no, no. God wants you to be lifted up. He wants you to pick yourself up and he wants you to move toward the purpose and goals that he has laid before you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight that people would hear my voice and hear your voice most of all and that they would no longer be caught up in the web of why the adversary came in when they did well and when they meant well, but that they would focus in on what you have for them and that you would give them the strength to stand and that in standing, they would see their breakthrough day come. And when their breakthrough day comes, that they would rejoice and again rejoice in Jesus' mighty name. Let the power of the Holy Ghost cause you to stand and move forward into what God has. There are many open doors, amen, that are coming your way. And there'll be an adversary at, at each one of them. But God has given you victory over the adversary. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. I pray that you have heard the word of the Lord, and I also pray that you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. If you have it, you can do so right now. Simply by saying, Lord, I open my heart. Say it out loud. Lord, I open my heart, and I receive what you did for me on the cross. You died for my sin. You rose for my justification. And this very moment, by faith, I put my faith in what you did on the cross for my sins to be forgiven. And in your resurrection, I put my faith and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer in faith, God is going to begin to work in your life like you wouldn't believe. Amen. God is good. Thank you for tuning in this evening or this day, whenever, whenever you're watching this. Uh, it, if we have sown some spiritual things of value to you, please consider uh, reciprocating through prayer, praying for us, and through financial support of this ministry. We thank you and those that have made this possible through their financial giving and gifts. And if you haven't, uh, as of yet, been a partner, please consider becoming one today 
Uh, you can do so on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, or a one-time gift, whatever fits for you. Amen? We appreciate that. You can go to ChristChurchLI.com and follow the giving instructions there. That's ChristChurchLI.com, and there'll be a giving link. Or you can mail your checks or, or prayer requests to Christ Church, P.O. Box 11, Mariches, New York, 11955. That's Christ Church, P.O. Box 11, Mariches, New York, 11955. Amen. One special announcement, prepare you to be present at our spiritual awakening service. Uh, Sunday, July 12th, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., two services. That'll be at the Ridgeville Gospel Church in Ridge, New York, 8 Ruth Lane, Ridge, New York. And we'll be under the gospel tent proclaiming Jesus Christ. We hope to see you. Until next time, may God bless you.